Travel speed is one of the biggest factors when it comes to heat input. Sometimes you can weld something hot and fast and put less heat into it than if you welded it cold and slow. We're doing an 11 gauge carbon steel T-joint today, TIG welding. My good friend Andrew Carden will be welding today. I'll be holding the camera. Let's hit it. For carbon steel, stainless, and 4130 chromoly, the ceramic Jazzy 10 is one of my favorite cups. Great gas shielding, and it lets you use a really long stick out, which really helps me for filming to get the camera out of the way. We didn't really intend to have any restarts on this joint. We intended to just weld it start to finish for the best looking joint possible, but sometimes things happen. They often happen. Good thing about it is that restarts are easy to make on cold gold steel. Whoa. Getting a little hot? I, no, I'm getting flashed like every time I get uh, I'm not sure what the deal is. Uh, get another helmet? Fine. Yeah, yeah. Some auto dark lenses are not sensitive enough to pick up a really smooth TIG arc. They're fine for stick and MIG, but sometimes on TIG they'll flash you. If that happens and you have both sensitivity and delay, if you'll increase both of them, that usually helps. I'm going to restart here because of the... Uh, Blinding. Andrew got blinded by his helmet flashing him, so here we go. Notice how Andrew doesn't waste any time increasing the amperage and getting that first dip of rod in there and getting moving. That's especially helpful on stainless steels to prevent buildup of heat. There's a really wide amperage range you could use on 11 gauge steel like this. We're all the way up 163 amps right here, partly due to the double thickness on the bottom, but also partly due to a fast travel speed. There's a wide range of amperage that you could use and weld this joint. You could probably go as low as maybe 90 amps with a small filler wire. We're using ER70S6 1 16th filler wire for this. Let off the pedal a little bit on the end, weld it all the way to the end. Add a little extra dab of rod, taper off, and that's that. As promised, here are the settings and details for this joint. You can pause the video if you're interested. But let's take a quick look at the difference between a long arc and a tight arc at 160 amps on carbon steel. A long arc makes for a big arc plume, and that makes the tip of that rod ball up and melt and blob into the metal instead of feeding into the metal. All I changed here was the arc length and shielding the hot tip of that metal with the argon. Things go so much better. A tight arc can fix a lot of problems. Hey, my store is at weldmonger.com. That's how I pay for these videos. We've got a good supply of Furic cups like the Jazzy 10 ceramic you saw in this video, along with kits. Kits like this Arsenal kit are super convenient because all you need to do is select what torch you have and you know everything will fit your torch. Even if you're not 100% sure what style torch you have, we've got some help guides for you. We've got a good stock of tungsten electrodes in all types and sizes and a good selection of TIG filler wire. And whether you make a purchase or not, feel free to download our free shortcut guide to TIG welding. It's much more than a PDF because it links to several videos that will guide you through the process, give you a jump start on learning to TIG weld.